In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the internal parasites that you're gonna to have to deal with with chickens and stay till the end because I'm gonna be talking about some natural preventatives and how to keep it from happening. Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So this is a second part of an original video I did earlier on chicken parasites. I mainly focused on external parasites in the first video. So this is the second one, and this is more on internal parasites. Now, I don't wanna repeat this information again, but just remember the key takeaway is prevention is far better than the cure. Now, let's talk about the internal parasites and look at how you can spot the parasite and cure it. The first parasite, worms. Worms are by far the most common internal parasite, and unfortunately, Unfortunately, there are a wide variety of worms. The good news is that with care and tidy housekeeping, you should be able to keep your girls worm free. Chickens that roam outside are unfortunately the most likely bird to catch a form of worms. There are two methods by which a bird can become infected, direct and indirect. Direct is when the bird forages and eat the parasite's eggs from infected poop or pasture. Indirectly is when the hen eats another creature like an earthworm, snail or slug that is already infected with the parasite. Now let's talk about how to stop chickens getting worms. So like I said, prevention is far better than curing. And so here are some ways to keep worms at bay. Number one, parasites eggs love wet warmish mucky areas so make sure to keep your runs clean and mud free number two keep the litter and bedding inside your coop fresh and dry also make sure to clean up the poop frequently if you had a particular bad weather day and the litter gets damp discard it as soon as possible number three warm eggs are destroyed by uv light from the sun so keep the grass and the run short the next one is sometimes wild birds will spread parasites to your flock be sure to keep wild birds out of your runs and coops number five quarantine your new birds and if the bird looks poorly to start with don't bring it home number six give your flock plenty of room overcrowding leads to many problems not just parasites and lastly you can use apple cider vinegar or crushed garlic cloves in their water once a week this will help give their gut flora a good balance these techniques can be used on any type of worm parasite however some types of worms require specific treatment so let's take a look at those number one round worms they are the most common type of worm to infect a chicken. If your chicken has contracted roundworm symptoms to look for include a loss of appetite, watery poop, decreased egg laying, a dull comb waddles and eyes, and wanting to isolate and be alone or they look dehydrated and a loss of balance. Very occasionally in severe cases, a worm can migrate to the hen's oviduct and a worm will be found inside an egg. A decidedly unsavory experience. Quick note, as unappealing as it may look, it is not a health threat to humans. Younger chicks are more susceptible to worms and will struggle to put weight on them if they have contracted them. This is why you need to be extra vigilant with young hens after around four months. They will develop some resistance to worms. As far as treatment goes, Wazine is the most common drug used and is approved for poultry use. It comes in a liquid form and needs to be mixed with your chicken's water. While your chickens are given Wazine, you can't eat their eggs. This is known as a withdrawal period. The withdrawal period varies from product to product but it's typically seven to 14 days. Worms are slowly becoming resistant to some of the more common worming medicines. So I advise that you use wormers sparingly and with caution. Some people worm their flock every six months, regardless of whether their chickens have worms. My approach is if you don't see a problem, don't unnecessarily treat your chickens with medicine. The next worm is capillary worms. These little buggers live in the crop esophagus and proventriculus of the bird. It its symptoms are very similar to roundworms, loss of weight, looking tatty, reduction in egg laying, and food intake. The treatment of capillary worms is the same as roundworms, and you can use wazine. The next one is tapeworms. Tapeworms require an intermediate host, meaning they can come from earthworms, snails, and other bugs that your chicken may pick up to be able to infect your bird. They usually don't cause too many problems. However, they can cause your bird to lose weight and look thin, but they are rarely fatal. Good coop hygiene and cleanliness is the best way to prevent your chickens from contracting tapeworms. Now let's talk about a warm climate parasite. 
the eye worm. This type of worm is mainly found in warmer climates, such as the southern states of the US. Again, like tapeworms, it requires an intermediate, like a cockroach to spread. Symptoms include scratching at the eye, drainage, redness, swelling, and a cloudy discoloration of the eye. If left untreated, it can eventually lead to blindness. To treat eye worms, you need to use Vet RX. Vet RX comes in a canister, which you can then spray over your chickens. After a few cycles of the spray, the worms should be cleaned up. The next parasite is a respiratory parasite called gape worms. These worms reside in the bird's respiratory system. If the infestation becomes severe enough, the affected bird will gape its mouth to get air. This is known as the gapes. Other symptoms include head shaking, hissing when opening its mouth, and stretching its neck. A severely infected bird can die. Early signs are lethargy, looking unkept, and a sudden loss of weight. If the infection is not very severe, then a wormer such as wazing can be used. However, in the case of a bad infection, you need to consult your vet. They will typically prescribe fenbendazole. However, be careful as overdosing your bird with this medicine can kill a hen. Remember, if you are concerned that your bird may have worms, collect a fecal sample from several birds and take it to the vet for testing. This test is relatively quick and cheap. The next parasite is a protozoa. It's a single celled organism, most of which are harmless. There are a few, however, that can cause havoc in your flock. The most common and devastating of these protozoan disease is coccidiosis. Coccidiosis is usually more problematic in chicks and growing pullets and is usually the prime suspect in the cause of death between ages three and six weeks. Chicks who forage with their mothers gradually build up immunity to the disease by being exposed to it. However, chicks brought in from outside sources are most likely to suffer since they have no immunity to the coccidia present in their new surroundings. It's always best to keep new chickens isolated on clean litter with clean water water and food dishes for at least two months. If you intend to expose the chicks to your existing flock, you will need to get them vaccinated by your local vet. If you are raising chickens organically and do not want to use medications, keep your chicks away from the flock until they are at least two to three months old. Then you can introduce them to your existing flock. Watch carefully during this introduction period. If they show any signs of lethargy, looking tatty, bloody diarrhea, isolate them and treat them immediately. I cannot stress enough the devastation coccidiosis can cause in a hen house. Although I've never experienced it myself, it's heartbreaking to watch. As noted many times before, prevention is better than the cure. So probiotics added to the water, a clean hen house, and frequent health checkups can all help avoid this devastating disease. Now I'll talk about some chicken parasites that can affect humans. Toxoplasmosis. It's an infection that is caused by Toxoplasma gondii. This is one of the few parasites that I have talked about that can actually affect both humans and chickens. In fact, it's estimated that that a third of people will be infected by Toxoplasma gondii during their lifetime. It is spread by rodents, flies, and cockroaches and is found in the poop of infected animals. It is harmless, although to prevent you from catching it, care should always be taken. Always wash your hands after being with your birds and make sure to use gloves when you clean out the coop. The next one is Jardiasis or like Jardia. Jardiasis is an incredibly rare parasite and is usually not problematic unless it overruns the immune system. Chickens normally catch this parasite through pecking at infected poop like from like a dog or a cat and symptoms include brown watery diarrhea weight loss and dehydration if you suspect chickens have jardiasis visit your local vet and they will prescribe your chickens antibiotics now let's talk about some natural preventatives what you've been waiting for so pumpkins are touted actually as a natural remedy or prevention to worms in poultry and cattle but as of now there's little evidence to support this claim that being said pumpkin seeds have characteristics that may make it otherwise attractive environment for a worm to thrive less desirable. It never hurts to give your chickens pumpkins throughout the year and pumpkin seeds. Make sure the pumpkins haven't begun fermenting. You can add pumpkins to your parasite prevention routine because at the least the pumpkins will provide your flock with a healthy treat. Also cleanliness is key. Making sure your chickens are well kept and free from parasites is not easy but provided you keep your coop clean and do regular health checks then you are definitely starting off on the right foot. That's going to do it for us here at the Happy chicken coop please be sure to click this other video over here thanks for listening if you find our content interesting if you learned something new please be sure to like the video subscribe to the youtube channel and i hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon